Think of your classic con artist. They lie. They're manipulative. They don't care about anyone else and they lack remorse. Are these people psychopaths, sociopaths, or both? People tend to think a sociopath is just a psychopath who doesn't go around doing criminal things. Likewise, psycho remains shorthand for all kinds of antisocial deviant behavior, from stalking to murder. Well, we've got some news for you. Despite all of the confusion around the words sociopath and psychopath, clinically speaking, there is no difference. The DSM-5, the Bible of psychiatric diseases, doesn't define sociopathy or psychopathy as official diagnoses. The clinical term for it these days is antisocial personality disorder, or ASPD, in case you're interested. So where does our popular understanding of these diseases come from? The history of psychology, folks. I went to school for psychology, so hear me out. The term psychopathy was coined in 1847. Originally, it referred to any mental illness, and it comes from the Greek root word suffering soul. In 1885, the term psychopath became more widely known in relation to a horrible story. A girl by the name of Sarah Becker was murdered in Russia. A woman confessed to her murder, but her confession was thrown out after a Dr. Bolensky dubbed this woman a psychopath. While Dr. Bolinsky most likely meant this in a general sense, the English-speaking world took it as a mark of her violent and self-interested nature. In 1930, an American psychologist, G.E. Partridge, studied the general category of psychopathy closely. He came to the conclusion that psychopathy was too broad of a term to be useful and helpful, so he suggested that we use the term sociopathy to define antisocial behavior. Sorry, Dr. Partridge, that one didn't really stick either. While terms like sociopathy and psychopathy aren't generally found in a clinical setting, that doesn't stop armchair psychologists from using them. Like me. I'm getting my PhD one day, okay?